Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a little interesting and hopefully a little bit of fun for you guys. Today I wanna to show you guys how I hook up to my dialysis machine. So if you didn't know, I have end-stage kidney failure. I am on dialysis. I have been since the beginning of May. I'm on peritoneal dialysis, which means that um, I have a catheter in my peritoneum and the fluid, the dialysis fluid goes in there and um, I get the toxins out through there. So it, it doesn't have to be in, it's not through my bloodstream. So it's kind of nice. It's a home dialysis. So I do it at home every night for eight hours a night. So my husband hooks me up right before we go to bed. And then in the morning when I wake up, he unhooks me. So he's amazing. He is my caretaker and he is my hero. So uh, without further ado, we are gonna show you just a little bit. It's gonna be kind of vulnerable. I'm gonna be in my PJs and in my bed and you know, all the things, but um, we hope this uh, gives you a little bit of insight as to what dialysis is like for me and kind of my nighttime routine um, every night that we do to start dialysis. So we hope you enjoy. Welcome to our messy room. So the first thing we do for my dialysis nighttime routine is we turn on the machine to heat up the liquid um, that's going to be going into my body. And then I weigh myself, which I already did because I didn't want to show you guys that part. And then I take my blood pressure and my heart rate. So Richard is going to push the button for that right now. I have the cuff on my arm. And I keep a log. Yep, and we have to log my vitals every single night. forever. Oh, it's coming. Oh, it's coming. Yay. 110 over 88. 110 over 88. I feel like that's... 84. Okay. Oh, and my pulse is 84, which is good because it has been like 98 lately. <laughs> so, what we do now, which we're not going to show you because it's kind of a long process, and it's not really that important to know, but Richard is going to um, administer heparin into the bags. Heparin is a medication that helps um, me kind of, it, I guess it helps me drain quicker and it helps get rid of some fiber um, in my catheter, right? Is that correct? Kinda, yeah, it takes care of anything that might be floating. Yeah, so he's gonna inject, so exactly. So he's gonna use needles to inject that and then he's gonna prime the machine, um, just kind of clean it and get it ready for use. So priming machine clears air out because yep. air getting in to me would hurt. It's very painful. Really, so it's very painful. It primes <laughs> the the line mm -hmm. with the liquid. Yep, exactly. So that takes about twenty minutes in all. And once we do that, we'll be back with you and we'll show you how we clean my exit site and how we connect. Stay tuned. <laughs> Alrighty, here we go. I'm in bed now and Richard is about to do what's called exit site care. You guys are about to see some stuff that might gross you out. So I'm sorry if you don't want to see my open wound and my catheter, but you're about to. So if you don't like it, make sure you click off or close your eyes. But I'm going to show you dialysis real life right now. Because guys, it's real. It really is. So Richard had, he had to wash his hands for two minutes. He just did that. And now he is going to take off my dressing. Well, in a minute. <laughs> Here he comes. Okay, he's going to take off my dressing. I wear this dressing on my wound every already day. Already untaped this from her. Yeah, we already untaped my catheter from the side of my body. Um, so I have like black tape marks. I have tape marks all over my body because I have tape every day. So I know that's funny. So he's taking off the dressing. Um, we change my dressing every single night because this wound is, it can get infected. It's an open wound. So now he's going to, he's cleaning it with what's called Accept, which is like a bleach skin cleaner, wound cleaner. It's not like actual bleach, but it has like a safe bleach in it. And he's using a gauze and he's just cleaning around the wound and underneath the catheter. And he's doing it again. You got three, no, uh, one to dry. Yes, he does three wet gauze pads with the Accept and then he, yeah, he does one to dry. And yes, this catheter, guys, I know it's a little obnoxious. Like when I first saw like when they first pulled my catheter out when I first started dialysis and I realized how long it was, I got super depressed and started to cry because <laughs> I was like, this is ugly. Richard was there. I had a breakdown. 
I didn't realize like how long and huge the catheter was and how it was like literally sticking out of me. It's super long. So you kind of always have a little bit taped so that it doesn't get tugged. Yeah, I have to tape it to my hip every day so that, um, they coil it and tape it so that it doesn't, yeah, so that it doesn't pull and dangle as I'm going about my day. Um, and so that nobody sees it because that'd be really awkward. <laughs> so now he's drying the except off of the wound or he's just drying the wetness off. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to get some ointment. It's called, I forget what it's called. <laughs> it's antibiotic cream, basically. Gentamicin sulfate. Yes, that. <laughs> and we do this every single night. We do the same routine with this. So it's pretty much super neosporin. Yeah, it, exactly. It's prescription. And it just kind of keeps it from getting infected. I've never had a wound infection yet. Knock on wood. Yeah. I don't have any wood to knock on, but I just trust God, so it's okay. So he's putting the ointment on through a stick right now. For those of you who are blind, I'm going to, I'm just telling you everything that's going on so that you can tell as well. Okay, and now he's actually not gonna put a dressing on because I'm gonna take a shower tomorrow and showering is a big deal when you have a catheter. So we're just gonna do some gauze over the wound tonight and put some tape around it so that it's secure, but we're not gonna do a whole dressing until after my shower tomorrow. So he's just taping the gauze around the wound to like keep it four types of tape secure. Yeah, that we can order. Yeah, he's using are you using paper or cloth right now. Paper. Paper. Okay, paper tape. Cloth leaves a lot of residue. Yeah, it does. It's kind of what we started using. Like yeah. From the get go, but now we've been moving on to. I, it says it's cloth, but it's really. It's not. So sort of plastic. It's oh the plastic, yeah. Which. But if you order plastic, it's like actual plastic. So yeah. We don't yeah. actually use. The, the plastic tape that I used to tape up my catheter, oh my gosh, you guys, we didn't show this part, but Richard untapes it every night, and it hurts, and it leaves wounds sometimes. Well, there's literally four, so the one that's titled cloth mm -hmm. is what we would consider plastic. Yeah. But the plastic one... Is bad. Not using <laughs> Okay, By the so, way, this creates a lot of trash. So. Oh my gosh. Dialysis, the first batch. Yeah, dialysis creates... This dialysis creates so much trash you guys like it that's the only downside to this home dialysis well there's lots of downsides but that's boxes one of them yeah okay so now my exit site care is done so what he's going to prepare to do now is he's going to um get his gloves on and his mask on because we are going to do a secure connection to the from my catheter to the machine so actually i'm going to just go ahead and get my mask on now too even though i don't technically have to for another minute but I'll just do it now. That's pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to be masked every time he does this. You wanna pull out your catheter and you can pull your shirt down. Yep. Catheter is out, shirt is down, you don't have to see my stomach anymore. <laughs> okay. Catheter is now. So what now what he's doing is he is putting this is actual bleach. It's called Alcabus. And he's getting napkins ready in case we spill. Like we, a little lap, pad lap pads. And he's got the um, alchemist on a gauze pad, just like the gauze pad he used for a my wound. Bigger. A bigger one, though. And he's going to clean the catheter. And he has to do this for a whole minute, which we don't really time it anymore. But he's pretty good at, like, estimating. But he has to rub it with, basically scrub it with this bleach every time we connect and disconnect. Every day. Mm -hmm. twice Morning a day. and... Morning and night, we do this. So... It just keeps it clean so that nothing bad gets in because... It's time to explain why it's important to do a secure connection. Yeah, why? Because this is a back door into her gut. Yep. <laughs> and so usually your skin or your digestive system are like the border patrol to make sure nothing bad gets into your gut. Like mm -hmm. your organs are just like hanging out. And this is just a back door. Go straight in. So <laughs> if you let anything on sterile touch this when it's open they recommend you immediately like flood your system with antibiotics and rush into the hospital or the it's... clinic yep it's very serious like if you even touch it with your finger on accident they're like clamp it get in there yeah or so. your clothes like anything that's not sterile they say you you need to go to the hospital or the clinic so everything they give us all the paper is in sterile packaging, yep. we have to make sure the room is secure, no moving air, no animals, no pets. 
Door has no to be kids. closed, no kids, so we do it when Bella's in bed, which is great. Because... And the mask, in this sense, is literally just, by the way, now I'm going to soak it in a second completely bleached one. And just let it soak for yeah, an additional minute. Yeah, letting it soak now. In more so bleach. So it's, it's wipe off in case, and you work around, and then now it's wrap it up and let it soak. Yep. Um, what were you saying about the masks? It's so that the... it's You'll see how quick the connection is. We literally... Hold them next to each other. Open, open, connect. Yeah, but we and have it's to open for it. less than a second. Yep. And but... this is just to prevent actual vapors or whatever's in our mouth. We hold our breath too, to be perfectly honest. But <sighs> well, when I'm wearing a mask, I don't. But if I ever forget to wear a mask, which has happened, you're not right up in it. No. <laughs> it's true. There's a couple times I forgot to wear a mask, and I just would hold my breath because I didn't grab it in time. Or you just turn your face. Mm -hmm. But for me, I'm like looking at it, and I have to like thread the needle pretty much like. Yeah, but it's okay. We try to be as safe as we can so that we don't get infections. So now I'll reach over and grab the, you guys saw that bundle of tubes. This is the patient line. It's clamped, but it has the liquid up here. Mm -hmm. So there's no air in it. And now I'm going to do it. So now he's going to do a secure connection. This is the part that is the most dangerous, but he's really good at it. So because you just do it in one second. Yep. So he's going to take the cap off of the catheter. Cap that keeps my gut That's secure. the last. Because that's the that's last the actual danger. That's right. So what do you do before that? I pop off that tube. Oh yeah, the tube comes off first. And then... And we're done. He's connected. He took the connected me to the machine. I always dab. There's a cleaning disinfectant in the cap. So they're one-time use, no matter what. You yep. put on the cap, it has a little sponge in there. And I always just use the bleach soaked thing to yeah we have to get a new cap every time and then i just dry it off because guess what bleach on sheets is a bad idea <laughs> we've done it <laughs> <laughs> usually when i soak it and i like hold it over so okay at this point we're done you we're can take done off your mask. okay we can do masks off just is... don't put it over here because i bleached it i won't i'll put it next to me so and now this whole thing just goes in the trash yep oh i can breathe better now <laughs> So now what we do, now that we're connected, um, we can start treatment. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do in just a second is, I might just stay on my back for this, even though it's going to hurt. Um, he will start the machine, because usually I will get in position, I'll lay on my side, because it's less painful, but I want to show you guys kind of how this works a little bit. So I'm going to unlock um, her transfer set. Yes. So now that's, this was a cap. So now this is allowing things through. Mm -hmm. So if you have it open and touch it, unsterile it's still locked so there's all these safety backup plans i guess yeah and now it's open on this end ready for the dialysis so fluid it's not to go pinched. in my body so now things can flow between yep so now what he's gonna do is he's gonna push um go basically what's gonna happen is we're gonna do what's called an initial drain so what it does is it drains me of any fluid that's been in my body all day that's that's not needed Okay. Some people in this treatment will have one Routine dwelling in their gut. Yeah, which I don't. For hours. So mm -hmm. the first step when you connect is to drain whatever's there. Some people, it's a liter and a half. Yeah, for me, it's like, do I don't know. One? Um, Sure. For me, it's like maybe, I don't know, what, 15 milliliters usually drains, or like 20 or 30, sometimes more. So I turn my heating pad on. Richard does it for me so that if I have pain, I can put it on right on my abdomen. This is this drain part, you guys will see. It's pretty painful. I'm good at like handling it now, but the drain is the most painful part, especially the initial drain and the final drain. So what, what basically happens is that this will drain and then and it takes like 30 seconds or so. And then it starts to fill. So it will fill me with 1.7, is that what it is? One point, or 1,700 milliliters of fluid. And it used to be 1,500, but because I'm pregnant, they want me to do more. I'm going to turn on the air. Okay, we're turning on. I mean, you don't, you don't have to do that, but it's okay. All right. Well. We usually turn on this fan so that I don't have to hear the motor because it gives me anxiety. Because <laughs> the, the drain is very painful. Yeah. So anyways, it's going to drain, and then it's going to fill me with the 1,700 milliliters, and then it's going to dwell. So it's just going to sit there for an hour and a half, and then it will drain again. And this it does this over eight hours four times. So this is what it does. And then in eight hours, I will be done with treatment. After my very painful final drain, we will unhook the same way we hooked up. So we and sleep right through caps it. in a sterile thing. Yep. Take so them out and put it up. Yeah, so here we go, baby. I'm, I think I'm ready for this. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> I can do it. 
I've never done it on my back before. We'll see how this goes. Okay, so he's pushed go. It is draining. I can now feel the pain. But it's, oh, sorry guys. So it basically, the reason why it's painful is because it's like a, I hate to say it this way, but it, it's essentially like a straw and it sucks fluid out to dry me out. And so it's pretty painful. Fortunately, only the initial drain and the third drain sometimes and the final drain hurt. So the ones in between like the first and second and fourth drain, I guess first and second drain don't usually hurt. So I, I can sleep through most of it, but I do get woken up by pain quite a bit, a couple times a night. So, oh, I think it's done. Wait, I don't feel pain anymore. Is it on fill now? Hmm. No? It doesn't go right away. Okay. Oh, it's... Okay. Let's see. Usually I feel like cold liquid when it starts to fill because the liquid is always obviously colder than my body temperature. They do warm it up. We, yeah, we do warm it up, but it just, it's, it's always noticeably different. I think I feel it, but sometimes I don't know. Sounds like it's filling. Is it filling? Or is it still training? Wait, now I feel it. It says fill. Fill. Okay, so now it's going to fill. And this takes usually about five to ten minutes. It fills me up with about, like I said, 1.7 liters. And then that'll sit. And then, like I said, it'll do it four times. So, anyways, we'll probably end this here because we're going to go to bed. But we hope that you enjoy this. If this was helpful for you to learn about how I do dialysis, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. And if you want to learn more about my dialysis journey and my journey being pregnant on dialysis and just more, uh, just if you want to follow our journey through this crazy life, be sure to subscribe down below to my channel and hit the notification bell so you know when we upload future videos. All right, guys, I'm going to get some rest. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.